I'm going to show you how to set up the Moog Sub 37 within Ableton Live. I'm assuming that you have downloaded and updated the Sub 37 with its latest firmware level and also that the USB driver of the Sub 37 is installed and that the editor plugin of the Sub 37 is in your VST folder and that Ableton can see it. So I've started off with a blank project from Ableton and I've gone to category instruments and I've selected the external instrument. I'm going to left click in Windows and drag onto the first MIDI track. And what this is doing, it's uh, I like to think of it as a MIDI and audio container. So I can just use one track and control that external piece of hardware. So I'm going to select the sub 37 out. This is a good indication because I can see it that the USB driver is installed correctly. So I'm going to select that so that the MIDI can be sent to it. And I'm using channel six. You'll select whichever channel yours is on. And my sound interface, my Sapphire Pro, the output of the Moog Sub 37 goes into input three. And now if I play a note, you'll be able to hear it. So that's that set up. Now what I'm going to do is in preparation, I'm going to create a MIDI clip and I'm going to put a nice, I'll put a couple of bars in there and we'll have a different note. We'll go for the C3 and E3. Now if I press play, I'm using the push controller, but you could alternatively use the play up here. So the Moog Sub 37 is set up correctly now as an external instrument. One thing I do want to do though, is to save it. And this will save us time later on. So if I click this save choice, and here we can now see external instrument. I'm going to call it Moog Sub 37. Now it's joined the rest of my external synths that can be used in future projects. And to use it, all you need to do is left click and drag onto an empty MIDI track. And when you do that, it'll make the connection straight away. Now I will delete that one because I don't need it. Now what we're going to do is use the plugin. And to do that, we're going to go to the category of plugins here and if it's in our VST folder, we should be able to see it. And here we can. And it comes in two versions, a 64 bit and a 32 bit. So use the correct version for your software. I'm now going to drag that using the mouse to the right of the external instrument on that track one. And as soon as I do that, we can see the software editor. And this is a visual representation of the actual hardware. What I'm going to do now is to create an association between the software interface of the Sub 37, the editor plugin, and the actual hardware itself. And to do that, I'm going to map the MIDI. So I'm going to click here, or in Windows, you can do Control M, and that puts us into the mapping mode. I'm then going to click on the control that I want to automate. Now I'm going to click the filter cutoff, because it's a very typical one, but we could click any of the knobs uh, that we want here. So I've clicked it once, and if you notice here, it's popped that in there. And what I'm going to do now is move the control 
on the sub 37 as you can see here and as soon as I do that it's made the association between the hardware knob and the software knob and I'll just come out of the MIDI mode now and what you'll see is if I turn the hardware knob in fact I'll do it with my left hand if I turn the hardware knob and if you look here it's changing value and it's positioning on the software control now of course it doesn't do it the other way around <laughs> that would be um, only if the controls on the hardware were motorized which they're not so anyway now we can do both we can move that and get the relative position in fact if you look at the you can see the value changing at the bottom where it says sub 37 editor now what we're going to do is record some automation because why would we do that well it could be because we only have two hands we could be playing the instrument and only have one hand free um, or in fact we could be playing with two hands and not have any hands free to manipulate the control on the actual hardware or the software even so to do that we can automate now up here at the top near the transport control of Ableton is this funny little two circled rectangle I'm going to click that on um, my push it's called automate and whichever one I click there it's turned yellow on my push the word automate is now lit up in red so we know we're set up for automation now to do this I'm going to click on the actual track itself in fact I double clicked and we need to pull up the envelope and to do that we use this we turn this on this letter E and it, you can see it's gone yellow and that has now showed us a grid with the two notes on there and a red dotted line going across and this is the envelope is actually uh, they're more curves um, and that will track the position and record the position of the knob as we move it while we're recording and I've armed the track and I'm going to in the first instance in fact it doesn't really matter whether I use the hardware or the software but I'll, demonst I'll demonstrate both now you can see here that it's sweeping the curve is sweeping up and down as I use the mouse and now I've let go of the I've turned the automate the automates on but the recording is disabled now and we have our curve and if you look at the knob here we have the automation and we can see the automation curve here this could be moved manually to any curve we desire but here I've tracked the position now if I were to put this back on to record now I'm using the actual hardware itself I'll do it again and there we have our automation now what were to happen if I were to click a different control so I'm going to click the MIDI mapping and we can still see our first map there from our hardware filter cutoff which is using CC number 19 and I'm going to click the resonance and then I'm going to move the resonance hardware knob and we can now see it's mapped CC21 which is the control number for that knob 
and we can see it's mapped. Now I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to record the, I'll get us ready again to do it. And there we now have two lanes of automation. And if you look here, you can see both are being controlled now. And that is how we automate using the Moog Sub 37 plugin. I hope you found this interesting. And if you have any questions, then feel free to ask.